Hi there, Brian here. I'm back with you today to give you the next part of my oil washing guide. This time I'll be focusing on how to use oil washing to get some really nice weathering effects on your scenery. While painting scenery isn't the most exciting thing, I do appreciate that some well painted scenery can really add to the atmosphere of a game. I was going to show some of these techniques on my Gladiator Tank 2, but I've received a lot of requests to show that as a complete video, so I'm going to upload that in the future. All of these techniques can be applied to almost any model anyway, so be sure to try them out. Before we start, I just wanted to thank all of those who have subscribed and helped me unlock the community tab on my channel. I have a voting poll on there at the moment for what you would like me to paint in the future, so be sure to check that out. And as always, if you find this video useful, please consider throwing me a like or subscribing for more content in the future. So let's jump right in and get started. As you've already seen for this guide, I'll be using some of the scenery that's come with Imperium magazine. I have several shipping containers, a set of fusion reactor pipes and a hemotrope reactor. As I said before, watching scenery being painted isn't the most exciting thing. So to keep this section on base coating brief, everything has been given a simple base coat of just one colour. Then some details have been painted in with GW Contrast Black Templar, and GW Base Iron Warriors. With the exception of the pipes and the reactor, which were given a base coat of Vallejo Metal Copper and then given a coat of Contrast Gilliman Flesh. This helps to bring down the colour a touch and give it a much richer look. Then everything was given a couple of coats of Vallejo Polyurethane Gloss Varnish. You don't need to coat them so that they look like coloured glass, but it's important that you do not skip this stage and that the coat is even, because some of the techniques used can damage your paint layer, so it's important that you protect it. I'm going to be using a mix of three oil paints here with some Windsor and Newton Sansador. So as always, make sure you're wearing a respirator or you're working in a well ventilated area. So I want to create a really nice, dirty and grime coloured wash. So the majority of the wash is going to be burnt umber, and I'm going to mix in a little burnt sienna to give it a richer colour and then a little bit of black to bring it down to a nice, warm, dark, rich, greasy looking brown. So as I'm demonstrating two different methods for applying the oil wash, I'm actually making two mixes here. The first wash is similar to the wash that I've used on my Space Marines and have featured in previous videos. The second wash will be thicker and have a consistency a little like chocolate milk. So the first technique is really simple and it's basically exactly the same as pin washing on a Space Marine. I'm going to take my thin wash and apply it into every crevice and every single bit of detail I can find. There's no need to be neat, precise or delicate. In fact, leaving a few blobs of paint or random pools can actually help when it comes to making effects later. Also remember to wash any metallic or blacked out details. Once again, it's all personal preference. I kept the wash light on this yellow container because I think that if I applied too much it might be overpowering. But on the blue container I think that the contrast of the heavier application works quite well. So give these about an hour and a half to rest, you don't want them to dry fully, you just need to let some of that sansador evaporate. Then get an old frayed brush just like this one, the more splayed out the better, and with quick sharp downward motions, grab those little reservoirs of pulled wash from the crevices. And hey presto, instant streaking grime. If the wash has dried too much or the streaks are too short for you, just dip your brush into some clean sansador, wipe off the excess and that will reactivate the wash. You can also redistribute any little reservoirs of oil paint that you find in those crevices to add streaks to other parts of the miniature. And remember, you can't get this wrong in any way. Because of the gloss varnish, you can simply wipe clean any areas you don't like and start again. Now let that dry fully overnight, then give it another coat of varnish to seal the oil wash, and you're done. Now the next method is even easier, but it uses the thicker wash. So grab yourself a nice flat brush and go ahead and cover the miniature all over. Don't be shy and really paint it on. You don't want it to be dripping wet of course, but make sure it covers every part of the details, including all of your metallics. On the fusion pipes, I did avoid washing the blacked out areas because I wanted to dry brush them later and I felt that it was a little bit of a waste of the oil wash. 
But in saying that, I did wash the black areas of the hematrope reactor because I wanted it to match the wash on the Mechanicum skull. But as always, 40k is all about personal preference, so feel free to apply the wash however you like. Experimentation and trying new things is one of the best things about this hobby, I think. Just like the containers, set those aside somewhere warm and well ventilated to dry for about one and a half hours. Then you're going to need some makeup brushes just like these. These little small eyeshadow brushes are ideal, but any makeup sponge will work. With very gentle strokes and practically no pressure, I'm cleaning up any flat areas. If you apply too much pressure, the sponge can soak up and lift the wash right out of even the deepest parts of the miniature. I want to leave these areas as they are because it looks like built up dirt and grime. If you like that, then you're pretty much finished, but I want mine to look the same, so I'm going to start creating that streaking grime effect in exactly the same way. For the fusion pipes in the reactor, I'm doing exactly the same thing. And on this scenery, I think the effect looks even better. It gives this really, really cool industrial grime effect. Now, the only downside to this method is that it does take the wash a little longer to dry. Because the wash has less sansador and more oil paint, it's going to need longer to dry. I would say about 48 hours, just to be sure. Once dry, however, just seal it with a coat of varnish as usual. So at this stage, the oil washing is complete, but I do have a few tips on adding some extra details. Using some GW Base Iron Warriors, I take a pretty heavily loaded dry brush and start to coat all the areas painted black or silver that you've coated in the wash. This even works for the containers. By dry brushing some random areas, it can make it look like some faded paint. Optionally, you can then give those areas another dry brush highlight with GW Runefang Steel to help make them pop. If you want, you can add some really simple OSL effects. Just give those areas a base coat of your preferred colour. Here I'm using Vallejo Game Heavy Red. Then I give that a wash of GW Null and Oil. Once dry, take a dry brush with your original base colour and give it a fairly heavy dry brush in an outwards motion. Then, with a smaller dry brush, give it another dry brush with a colour one shade lighter, just enough to catch the edges. Here I'm using GW Wild Rider Red. Then varnish all of that up with some Vallejo Polyurethane Matte Varnish. And you're done! So there's another way of getting your scenery onto the tabletop. It's a little bit more involved than my previous guide on the Mechanicum Ruins, but for certain industrial scenery I think it looks amazing. The beauty of it is, you can even apply this to scenery you've already painted. Just give it a few coats of gloss varnish and you're good to go. Also, you can return to the scenery later to add more details. For example, when I've got more time, I'm going to return to the containers and add some OSL effects for the lights. So if you find this video useful, please consider liking or subscribing and leaving a comment below. Oh, and do check out the community tab and cast a vote on what you would like to see me paint in the future. So until next time, remember, enjoy your painting, have fun, and I'll see you soon.